Welcome back to the channel, guys. It's Jason with your Hopium Free Crypto channel. Today, we are looking at the bullish news for Bitcoin and crypto, consolidating the news over the last few days and putting it together in a bite-sized chunk in today's video. Then we'll move on to the charts to update us from the market conditions over the last 12 to 24 hours. Also, the media looks like they are trying to position Solana as a threat to Cardano. Obviously, they have smart contracts and Cardano doesn't. But I think this is just a bit of marketing to get the headlines going. Either way, both projects are looking pretty sound at this point in time, being that they are in all-time highs. So we'll follow that on the chart as well. But before we get started, potentially we have clocked over to 200,000 by the time you see this. Either way, thank you very much for subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. Make sure you do that and click all so that you can see these videos pop up in your feed. You can always unsubscribe later. But if you do, then you'll be updated with the daily cryptocurrency updates. While you're at it, if you could hit that like button down below and let us know your thoughts on the videos in the comment section. I'll read all of those comments on the daily. Moving on to the first bit of news and we have Citigroup gearing up to trade CME Bitcoin futures. This isn't out yet. It's a, another company which is awaiting regulatory approval to begin trading. These are good headlines, but we're always awaiting regulatory approval. I'm very excited to see what will happen once one of these companies is approved because it seems like every week or every other week, we're seeing a new company come forward or recycled news to tell us about CME futures that are coming for Bitcoin or any sort of futures that are coming for Bitcoin. So I really want to see what happens when this actually hits the market. Uh, but nonetheless, there is, of course, a lot of interest and they'll join fellow megabank Goldman Sachs in offering Bitcoin futures trading. The point here is we would like to see it physically settled. So once the futures contract expires, it would be lovely to see it physically settled where Bitcoin is distributed because then that will put pressure on the market, whether it's buy or sell pressure. Michael Saylor has purchased nearly 4,000 Bitcoins for a total of 177 million in cash at an average price of 45 grand. So he wasn't buying it at the $30,000 low, average price of 45 grand. Of course, he is buying 177 million. So to be able to get that all in one hit, maybe Bitcoin isn't just ready for that at this point, but he now hodls 109,000 for a round number. Bitcoin acquired for nearly $3 billion, average price of 26K. So I guess if you have an average price under 26K, you can probably say you're doing better than MicroStrategies, but I assume they're going to be buying more on the way up as well. So that's just going to bump up their average price. Good news either way, not so good news for Peter Schiff, who is still calling for the, the dump in Bitcoin. It'll fall at some point, but the lows are getting higher. That's a bullish sign long term. Now, breaking, Morgan Stanley owns over 1 million shares, not 1 million Bitcoin, in Grayscale Bitcoin Trust. So this is worth around 36 million or over 700 Bitcoin, nothing like a micro strategies buy, but it's a major institution as well. So we're getting a few more bucks into the Bitcoin game. Back on June 28th, when Bitcoin was standing, uh, still trading low 30,000s, Morgan Stanley disclosed a big position on GBTC, which is, of course, the uh, grayscale BTC trust. And uh, this is via their Europe Opportunity Fund. So it's nothing huge, 36 million compared to obviously micro strategies. But again, it's just a lot of these institutions dipping their toes into the water. So, and that was at the lows as well. So they were getting it in what we heard anyway from the low 30,000s. So it looks like a lot of these companies are starting to buy again on this major dip. I suspect it's only speculation if we were to get another pullback like we talked about in yesterday's video, I suspect many of them would probably be trying to buy again. And this might be those companies that are trying to play the market to get us to drop some of that Bitcoin down for them because it just keeps climbing at this point. The SEC filings, uh, Morgan Stanley has just reported owning a large amount of grayscale uh, across multiple portfolios. The largest of these appear to be 928,000 shares held by Morgan's Insight Fund. Now, I keep emphasizing shares because this is not total Bitcoin. It's just shares in the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust. Ethereum Foundation receive 1.5 million to further ETH 2.0 development. I like this because there's a lot of the major crypto companies that are getting on board to support the upgrade in a decentralized environment. This is pretty cool stuff for a uh, for a crypto project to have the support of its peers. So you've got Kraken, Compound, Lido or Lido, I don't know which way it's pronounced, Synthetics, 
the graph and Uniswap. So all donating about 250K each to support the open source development of uh, ETH 2.0. I'm very excited for ETH 2.0 and I will probably be doing a video on ETH 2.0 staking through Ledger. Let me know in the comments if you guys have already done that or if you'd like to know more about that. Currently, the percentage is around 6% on your ETH in a almost pretty much decentralized environment rather than giving your ETH to a centralized finance company. So let me know in the comments if you'd like to see more on that. Institutions pouring money into Solana and Cardano. So they're starting to bring these two together. Cardano has a lot of good marketing out there quite naturally in the community. And now Solana is, well, at least the, the media headlines are starting to tag that onto Cardano as well. I might even have that in the title. So you'll see that this will be coming out. I like to just share that with people so they sort of know what's going on in terms of how these projects are coming together to get some marketing out as well, to get some more eyeballs in the space. You know, Solana is something that we're interested here on the channel. So this is pretty exciting to see as well. There's more money pouring into Solana and it was more than Cardano. Solana recorded more institutional capital inflows than any other crypto asset last week. So institutions bringing money into Solana, even though they already have a, well, I mean, two different things here, but they've got a lot of VC money as well. Inflows of 6.4 million for ADA, for Cardano, and then Litecoin 1.8 and Polkadot 1.1. Cardano, Red Hot, saw only slightly less institutional inflows than Solana. I suspect that's because Solana is actually working at the moment, whereas ADA isn't. But they're having just slightly less for a non-working product. That says quite a lot. We could speculate on that, of course. Across to more Solana news, Solana developers can now use Chainlink's DeFi price feeds. What is this? The fastest growing sector of decentralized finance is getting another boost as Chainlink's price oracles today went live on Solana. So they help platforms to receive reference data, such as prices of various cryptos and tokens in real time. So we're starting to get all these connections coming into Solana. And that's why I've got something around the, the biggest threat to ADA is other projects which are getting uh, momentum in the community, getting momentum in funding, getting connections that are actually working and then proceeding to, I guess, expand the ecosystem. I'm not trying to have a go at Cardano or anything like that, of course. This is why we hold multiple assets in our portfolio. And Solana has a smaller, uh, smaller market cap than ADA. Uh, so if we look at where we currently sit with ADA is 88 billion, Solana's at 20 billion. So four and a half times smaller is where Solana sits. So this could be pretty big news for another project, another smart contract to leapfrog into that top five and give us those bigger gains. I think they're all going to do pretty well, but got to keep our eyes out there in case there is something else that is brewing. And this isn't anything new. This is a tweet that I've been referencing many times on the channel. Really, really good read. Uh, I will repost this on my Twitter if you guys want to have a read of it. But essentially, this is back from April and earlier, of course, he's been doing his research on Solana to show where he thinks it could position in the future within the cryptocurrency project. So it could be a top three to five project, which would, of course, push it up into that third position. Again, it's speculation, but the information on this is pretty interesting. So if you want, follow my Twitter and Instagram. Uh, I'll repost this as well so you can find it. Really, really good read if you want to have some further information on Solana. ADA launching in Japan in 10 minutes. I have specifically looked at this time. This is dead on 26 hours ago for me as I filmed this video. I, I was reading a lot of comments from you guys uh, about J uh, ADA launching in Japan. I want to see how that goes on the on the pricing, etc. And as we can see from this point, just as a reminder to ourselves around news announcements like this, whether they do affect the price or they don't. And it comes, what happens is it, it'll depend on the time in the cycle for that crypto, short term, long term, uh, down to you know minutes, hours, days, weeks. That's what's going to depend on. So ADA launching in Japan in ten minutes. Waited a very long time for this day. Everyone's super excited. Nineteen thousand likes and thousands of retweets. Price we can see in a moment hasn't really done anything from that point, which is fair enough. Maybe we were leading up into this, and then the, the tweet came out. Okay, on to FTX news. So FTX set to pay seventeen and a half million. I never nearly said billion in crypto for exclusive naming rights. If FTX has done this really, really well over the last 12, maybe longer months, and they are just getting their name out into a lot of spaces, this time 
It is part of the $17.5 million deal. Uh, Leah Field will accept the full payment in cryptocurrency on behalf of the university through this historic 10-year agreement, FTX. 10 years, you're going to be calling this thing FTX Field. FTX receives, receives uh, naming rights to the field at California Memorial Stadium, which will be known as FTX Field at California Memorial Stadium. So the, the field has a name, the stadium has a name. Uh, obviously, I've never been there. This is what's how I am picturing it as I am reading it on the internet. This also goes on with more naming rights. NBA approves deal to name Miami Heat, uh, Miami Heat's home building FTX Arena. So this is previous news. We know about this uh, a few months ago now. But just to show how much work Sam Bankman-Fried is doing, getting the name of FTX Exchange out there, which is uh, another big crypto that we love the look of here. You may not, but take note of what some of the personally, I think, good projects are doing and see if that applies to your project as well. These guys are getting their name out there a lot. 19 years, the Miami Heat Stadium is going to be called FTX Arena. It was two weeks ago when the Miami-Dade County Commission's, uh, Commission approved the $135 million deal for the next 19 years. FTX name is going to be in place 10 years in California, 19 years in Miami. They got a $210 million naming rights partnership in esports. We've seen this happen as well. It's on the, the jerseys. And remember, Crypto.com has also done this with the UFC and the F1, putting their sponsors, their logos all over the jerseys of the, the umpires and the players. FTX is also with the Major League Baseball. So FTX is branded everywhere. Monero, quick one on here, climbs 20% as atomic swaps go live. Now, the really beautiful part about this is these swaps are called atomic because they only have two possible outcomes. Either the trade is successful, uh, successfully completed, and each trader receives the others, other one's fund, or nothing happens and both traders keep the funds they started with. So this is a really big upgrade and we, what we want to see in the privacy space. Now, we don't give enough attention to privacy because it's unregulated and governments aren't going to want this. They want to squash anything to do with privacy. So as you go about your day making money in cryptocurrency, keep this as part of your radar as well. Maybe it's not a great investment. I don't know. I'm not saying it yes or no, but just keep an idea on these because these could be big things coming up in the future to for us to be uh, needing to use them in our own personal lives. Now, just before we dive across into the charts, today's sponsor is Invictus Capital, uh, Crypto 10 Hedged. This is a crypto hedge fund where you can just purchase the C10 and get exposure to the top 10 cryptocurrencies, which are rebalanced weekly. So if you don't want to have to go in and out buying and selling different cryptos, this rebalances it on a weekly basis and you can see what the current holdings are for this week. Uh, they have their own algorithm, which will then hedge into US dollars when needed to prevent big drawdowns, so big losses. Now, the other thing to note is as a hedge fund, the idea here is that maybe you don't want to be exposed to big drawdowns, but then that will also limit you to the big upsides. The other thing that is good with uh, hedge funds, or at least just buying this type of product, is that you save on taxes. You don't have to be going in and out of different cryptocurrencies to be buying them. You don't have to be keeping up to date with uh, which projects coming into the top 10 or out of the top 10 and you know buying and selling to make sure that you're not holding a losing project. All of this is done within their algorithm uh, while you hold the C10 token. So if you want to know more about the C10 hedge fund, check out the other videos on my channel that I've done with the CEO and uh, the other co-founder as well. And then also I'll leave a link to Invictus Capital in the description where you can find their Telegram, uh, their, sorry, their Discord and their Twitter. And you can ask some specific questions on their Discord uh, if you've got anything related to how does this all work. So that's today's sponsor. Thanks very much to Invictus Capital. Links are down below. Now, finally, onto the charts and we'll have a look at what has happened since yesterday. So we've updated from where we are, we're four, looking at a four hour chart because not much has really happened. We have dropped into 47,000 support. Volume is lacking on the way up. And so the breakout above the current high at 50,500 is only 2.5% away. So the way I'd like to see this is if we get a break and some support above it, some volume coming in, then it looks like we're possibly going to continue higher and uh, continue this lagging sort of move into the next resistance level. What I mean by lagging is what we talked about yesterday, just 
the range is becoming smaller as we climb. That's not what we want to see. We want to see some consolidation and then a springboard effect up again. Note, notice how we did that many, many times before. We have a little bit of a springboard here and then we move. We have a, a springboard here and we move. Then we started to flatline and we didn't get much happening. We looked at this pattern being very similar to what we're currently experiencing at the moment, but just on a smaller scale. So Bitcoin, not much has happened there. I'm still looking at those prices of a break of 50 and a half to get us into that more bullish sense, but uh, potentially seeing that correction uh, if we break down from these levels at 44K, then I'm looking at around that 42K, which has had those highs come in earlier. So again, I'll update this tomorrow. Not much has happened over the last 24 hours. ADA, same sort of deal. We had Japan, uh, ADA launching in Japan. Markets actually come down and stayed stable at around $2.70, which is a good sign. And remember, the consolidation above the highs is what we want to see for a bullish continuation. Currently, that's what we're seeing. An inside day, not much to be said here, which is not bad news either. All right, that's what we want to see. Good volume holding these levels and then continuing the journey after it's had enough time to consolidate. Solana, same sort of deal. We are seeing a little correction here as well. Good bounce from $66. Should we have a move up and another move down? Again, the same sort of thing. Remember, this is the high here at around 55 to 60 bucks. Let's get a consolidation there or where we currently are. That's fine. As long as we get some time to rest, rebuild, refuel before we take off to our, our uh, moon, our soul moon, our sun moon. Moving on to FTX. Now, similar sort of thing, but we're not at all-time highs. You can see ADA and Solar all-time highs, but FTX currently sitting beneath its all-time high, but we're in a bit of a wedge pattern here. That's not a bad thing, provided we don't break down from these lows at around $44, $43 and continue to hold above our stronger position of 50%. So that's at $48 here. We are seeing a little bounces below it and then bounces above, and eventually this is going to have to come to a conclusion fake out and up, fake out and down, maybe just continuing steady climb up. But again, that price, the highs, 54 bucks, 54 and a half is going to be the level that I want to see broken and broken decisively, whether we get a pullback support or we just take off. Either way, I'm using this as a time to uh, dollar cost average in and should we get a breakdown, I will be selling the house to be getting into FTX after all of the fundamentals that I really like about this project and the uh, the the CEO himself as well, Sam Bankman-Fried. That's it for today's video, guys. I hope you found some value from it. I know it's a long one, but we had a lot of news to cover. In future videos, I'll break it down a little more. So uh, let me know in the comments down below. Shorter videos, longer videos. I'd uh, love to hear from you regardless and how you are doing with your crypto investments and trades. I hope you have a great day. I sure am. And I'll see you at the next video. Until then, have more fun to get more done. <laughs>